so hi well the good noise podcast i'm shane i'm glory season six man season six i haven't we haven't spoken in two weeks no we haven't we except texts well, we've, yeah. we've we've messaged even then it's been very light but yeah. um because we were just talking about that i was like there definitely at some point we were like gonna talk and we didn't no. at all we actually took a break exactly so round of applause as we for that mm-hmm. um so it, it's been a month since we've done this um mm-hmm. so we might be a little rusty we're gonna be very rusty or maybe a little huh you cut out or, may- <laughs> or maybe a little unhinged a little unhinged no i'm too tired for that <laughs> Dude, just chug an energy drink. No. <laughs> um. So, I mean, shows have been getting fucked left and right. But uh, last month, my last show of last year, we didn't mm-hmm. get to talk about it. I saw Can't Swim in oh, Light yeah. Waves mm-hmm. uh, at the House of Independence. And um, that was pretty cool. At the end yeah. of Can't Swim set, they uh, started throwing, like, they had, like, cardboard boxes that were wrapped because it was, like, a Wait, Christmas no, show. Wait, no, you did, you did talk about this on the last episode. Did I? Well, I'm, I'm yeah, talking about started, it again. Yeah, they, they started were, piling well, it on the yeah, side, they right? Were, no, they were throwing it into the crowd, and then they started piling mm-hmm. it into the side. Maybe I told you this yeah. when we had to do the, the interview, the, the interview. email. Maybe. Sorry, yeah. continue. continue. I don't know, Maybe but they, they were throwing boxes in, into the crowd, and then they had to pile them onto the, off to the side, and that mm-hmm. was really scary. I've never yeah. been to a show where things are getting thrown. Like, I, I thought that, like, you know, maybe if I went to, like, a hardcore show, like, shit just starts getting thrown in the crowd, but not, like... Boxes. Uh, not, like, a, a post-punk show or whatever Can't Swim is. Yeah. Um. So that was scary. I stand. I stood in the back. So you were fine. Yeah, I wasn't going to get pummeled by a box or two. But, and obviously, My there's God. nothing in the boxes. That would be dangerous. I would argue <laughs> that flying boxes when no one expects it is also mm-hmm. dangerous but it's pretty i mean yeah. poke an eye out i mean you know you just start throwing yeah. shit into the crowd and like no one exactly. it wasn't like the, the inflatable candy canes they had been throwing in the crowd all evening oh so they just they said they ran out of candy canes <laughs> so they just went for the boxes <laughs> sure why not <laughs> wow all right um so there's that that mm-hmm. uh that show happened yeah. um and that that's been it every other show i had planned not like i had very many planned uh Mm -hmm. got canceled or postponed or rescheduled Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so that's fun so can't swim show aside as i said Mm -hmm. all of my shows after that have been postponed or rescheduled but i have one coming up this friday Mm -hmm. so fingers crossed that which is uh owl but with any uh range life Mm -hmm. christian sparaccio and then i think Mm -hmm. fire is motion nice all kind of going down um this friday i'm selling merch for range life so stop by that has stop by, and, and, Zach, stop by and shane will sign your stuff i will I sign know. your range life vinyl i'm not there in the band go. but i'll sign it <laughs> Is that, he'll sign it for you um right. so uh we're not really covering anything from the end of the year because really there wasn't much besides like there wasn't a anything. state champs christmas single um but we are going to cover two weeks worth of music so that's fun yeah um kicking that off the weekend surprise dropped an album dawn fm yeah he I'm, just he he said he was going to drop that on like thursday and then he dropped it on friday right he had said at the beginning of the week like midweek but mm. he had been teasing like that he was going to surprise drop a record like at the very end of the mm-hmm. year yeah. um i made this album for my my entire personality for a week um <laughs> so that's fun. so you liked it it was very good i very <laughs> much go. enjoyed this album like a lot um yeah. and now my personality trait is the under oath record um as it should be but yes i made this album my entire personality my favorite songs are sacrifice and best friend two mm. absolute bangers mm-hmm. um but yes very good 10 out of 10 recommend it. you've probably listened to it though because it's the weekend it's the weekend mm-hmm. who who has listened to it true What'd you think yeah. of it though? I thought it was really good. Uh, I'm not like a weekend stan, you know. Tyler was on the album though. Exactly, Tyler and uh, Lil Wayne. And you said you like the Lil Wayne song. Yeah, Lil Wayne is hit or miss. Uh, he didn't suck on this one though. Yeah, he's at, he's he's been on a on a streak now. 
for for all of his recent features that have actually been good. I think I said it in the chat, but nobody laughed at it, so I'm gonna say it here. So you have to laugh okay, at it. Okay. <laughs> Lil Wayne had to get all of the bad stuff out in that one MGK feature, but now he's good. He's clean. What MGK feature did he do? He did an MGK. He did a feature on uh, MGK's album. Did he? Yeah. Remember you? You trashed on it so much. I thought trippy. I thought that was trippy red. It was trippy red. Yeah. Oh god, my they brother's gonna suck. kill me. <laughs> no. Good. Trippy red is good. I thought it was Lil Wayne. I remember because you don't like Lil Wayne. I fucking hate Lil Wayne. No, it was Trippy Red. <gasps> There's features from no Halsey, way. Trippy Red, Be- Black Bear, and Ian Dior. Was it Ian Dior that you were trying yes, to was- fucking Okay. His fucking okay. feature was so bad. Oof, never mind then. Never mind. Oh, oh my God. But still, he's had a couple misses. And I think he just got out of the system because now he's just he's cruising. He's doing good likes this album tyler's feature was not what i expected i mean you gonna sign this prenup i get it pop off king i hope she signed the prenup yeah it was yeah. it was interesting not what i expected <laughs> either uh mm-hmm. i didn't really expect the, him to have tyler on the album just to repeat the same line a couple of times basically he had, he had two bars and then he just kind of kept saying you you gonna sign this prenup i think he said like eight times yeah, yeah. and i was like that's you paid him for this. <laughs> well, I mean, Tyler was a big The Weeknd fan. But like, so, you paid him for this. I don't know. I don't care probably, what sum probably. of money it was. You paid mm-hmm. him to say 10 bars and only two of them were unique. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. That's all I got to say. New Tyler content. Drop an album, Tyler. We need it. Earl Sweatshirt dropped a new album. Sick. I like this a lot. I love Earl Sweatshirt. Good job, Earl. Yeah, honestly, this album so was good. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, no complaints from the complaint no. department over here. Exactly. I'm happy to hear that. I was very excited to see that this album was a thing. I asked for a uh, interview. Got rejected, but Earl, if you're, you're listening, watching. you are always welcome on the podcast. Big fan. Open invitation. Big fan. Yes. Um, Never Any Ordinary dropped a new album, Stay For Your Own Sake. When Gloria put this on the playlist, I was slightly traumatized because the last time we spoke about them, I was very mean about the single. <laughs> Honestly, I think I watched it a couple weeks. I don't think you were mean. I just think I just it said wasn't, I didn't like, like it positive. and it didn't go over exactly. well. And that's yeah. okay. I get it. So I was very scared. Mm-hmm. going into this album i actually mm-hmm. did enjoy it everything yeah. down even the song that like you know six months ago or whatever i said i didn't really like i oh, thought um, it was pretty good yeah. yeah what the fuck is up the denny's yeah um no i actually thought that this album was solid good so this wasn't a trap i'm gonna be completely honest i just i saw it i saw it and i was like oh glory's trying to get me that. in trouble again <laughs> yep <laughs> i thought this album bang. i really enjoyed yeah, it yeah it was very good um i also was in the and of the Denny's song. This album's good though. The the opener is my personal favorite. Thank you. Sure. Fit for an autopsy dropped an album. Oh, what the future holds. We spoke to I thought you were gonna continue. Oh no. <laughs> you started it so you can finish it. I don't fucking care. <laughs> we spoke to Fit for an Autopsy. If you would like to watch that. Um he was tattooing somebody the entire time, and it was really cool. It was one of the most interesting interviews I think we've done solely because he was tattooing someone the entire time. Exactly. Not the so, best conversation we've ever had, but the fact that he was able to hold one at all. Exactly. While ta- well, and shout out to the person getting tattooed, being okay with two teenagers interviewing your tattoo artist while it exactly. happens. Exactly. Yeah. But now so, they have that documented forever. Like, hey, that's my tattoo. That's my tattoo. We, we mm-hmm. don't know who it was, but shout out you if you're watching. Hey, you, if you're watching, come on the podcast. Let's talk about that interview. <laughs> your tattoo. <laughs> that, um, yeah. But no, this album was pretty fucking good. Um, well, there's not much else to say. It's fucking good. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Heavy. Yeah. But this was good. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. So good job, guys. Uh, Enterprise Earth dropped a new album, The Chosen. This fucking album, like, it's an hour long. 
It's a long yeah. fucking album. Yeah. The songs are almost seven minutes each. It's a long fucking song, you know? Each one is seven minutes long. Scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, it's so fucking good. And like, you get immersed in it. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I just, I love it. It's a very good album. I love when, when bands and artists are able to do that, where it's like, yeah, you, <laughs> Tyler Creator did great with that, with his like two nine minute songs. Kanye West failed at it with his <laughs> two hour album. So just to put it in perspective, I love when artists are able to pull that off, where mm -hmm. it's like you look at the the length of the album and you're like, oh, God, this is going to this is going to be a trip and not a good one. But then when you listen to it, you just kind of get immersed and you just kind of get taken away with the album. This album did a very good job with that. I enjoyed sure. that. Good job, guys to be able to do that because <laughs> obviously Kanye West can't do it. How, how are you Kanye West and you make me dread listening to your album that's just it that's all I guess yeah uh under oath dropped a new album voyeurist yes there you um, go as I said at the beginning of the episode I have made this album my entire mm -hmm. personality over the yeah. past couple of days it's so fucking good um under oath really hit it out of the park with this one hallelujah is currently my favorite song it like i don't know if it's meant to be like religious or anything and really i don't care like i'm gonna <laughs> listen to it anyway but like it mm -hmm. feels so holy while listening to it like they just mm -hmm. like they nailed it like i yeah. get like this like fuzzy feeling inside of me when listening to it and i'm like oh i don't God. normally feel that way when listening Whoa. to music and i'm like god fucking damn you guys just nailed it with this song <laughs> like fuck <laughs> Bro, Andrew's gonna make you Christian or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I like because they came up with like that whole like Christian metalcore scene kind of shit, and like that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I love, I love some good old Christian core, uh, Christian mm -hmm. metalcore. But um, Christian core. So that's my review of the album. Go listen to it. Specifically, Hallelujah. It's a very good song. Hallelujah. <laughs> You enunciated every part of that word. I've never heard that. Um, yeah, this album was very good. I, Shane was hyping it up a lot, mainly because I saw him listen to it a lot. And I was like, God, that's cool. Um, but this was actually really good. It did not, uh, it didn't miss. It's very didn't good. Uh, mm -hmm. Throat drop an EP, Rot Alone. Um, you're probably thinking, why did I put this on here? That was exactly what I was okay. thinking. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. One of the guys in the band, Jimmy, uh, he's like a half brother to uh, Lucas, Parks' tour manager. That's oh! Why. And Jimmy follows us on Twitter, and his band's pretty cool. So hi, Jimmy. Um, but yeah, no, I was listening to the CP today while driving home from work, dude. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Having like head banging while I'm driving and shit. I'm like this isn't not safe. safe, not no. safe. But the <laughs> the EP goes so hard. Mm -hmm. like this band has to be on everyone's fucking radar like if you enjoy mm -hmm. like hardcore man this shit is so good i love this ep that's awesome i'm glad you found this one uh definitely something i've never heard before considering like there was a, like a 45 second track and it was it felt like it was still a full length track but it didn't feel like it was that long it got enough done in the time that it was there but it wasn't like, oh, God, when is the song over? And most of the tracks, I think the longest one was like two minutes, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. in, it's like in your face and out of your face in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It was, I enjoyed As a person who doesn't enjoy that genre, this was good. And this was easy for me to uh, digest. So good job, guys. Pulses dropped. It's not an EP. What kind but of I'm is? counting it as an EP. It's like three tracks. Whatever. Um, yo, Champ in the Making. Another banger from Pulses. I love Pulses. I love Pulses. This is amazing. Miss just once, please. For the rest of us, just <laughs> hand over one miss. Is that no sleep records? Pick them up, please. Yeah. Um. So yeah, very, very another another smacker from Pulses. <laughs> <laughs> another smacker uh, they should they should put that in the press release another smacker from pulses in, from good noise podcast oh <laughs> uh, uh story untold in dallas dropped a single attention junkie i want to talk mm -hmm. about smackers i don't think that story untold is capable of missing uh mm -hmm. because they just keep on dropping bangers i'll keep on referencing that ep from last year one of the mm -hmm. best eps to come out last year and they're mm -hmm. they're continuing that trend with the past couple of singles they put out. So fucking good. And the song is like less than two minutes long. Yeah, that's good. 
I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It's probably my least favorite that I've heard from them. But all their songs are good, so that's, like, not saying it was a bad song. It's just, out of all the other ones, it's just not really my favorite. Um, and the, I don't know, the, the, not the picture, what is it, cover art? It's been, it's been, like, a month. Give me a break. The cover was, like, it didn't really fit it for me. I don't know, it just, it didn't It's connect. very random. Yeah, right? Uh, Korn dropped a new single, Forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good i fucking love corn i don't shower <laughs> fucking love corn <laughs> average corn listener. god dude <laughs> so fucking good oh my god i don't know man another banger like put the fucking album out it's like less than three three weeks away now at this point um gonna make that my whole personality for like the entire month of february when it comes out that's good um, I will listen to nothing else once mm-hmm. that record comes out. But yeah, no, another smacker from the corn boys. From the cornies. The corn? The cornies? Let's the cornies. not do that. Let's not do that. Let's not do cornies. <laughs> um, this song was... A corn banger. Definitely a corn song. It was a corn song. Uh... It was there. And I didn't... It, it was. It was better than the other one now i it's crazy that you say that granted you're not a corn fan so no um but like i saw people like in the corn discord server being like i like the 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 lead single better i'm like you guys should all shut up everything that corn puts out is great and yeah. like but like i just don't get because this one's like more in line with like their sound um mm-hmm. i don't know maybe because this track sounded a little bit more like the albums that people don't like as much which are my uh, favorites. Oh, um, oh, so you're different. Yeah, I'm, you're not like I'm different other. and quirky yeah. and cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, this is Oh, this me. is you. Mm-hmm. Out of it. We're working on it's it okay. still. Hey, uh, it's the first episode back. It's fine. it's fine. Joey Badass, but the S's are dollar signs. Put out a single, The Revenge, but the E in Revenge is a three. Um, oh, the middle E. In the revenge, middle of is the, it yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize it was more than one the e in revenge. In revenge? <gasps> because the one on the sheet has a three in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. What did you think of this song? I thought this song was fine. <laughs> I'm mad now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shane, it's okay. Okay. I thought this track was, was good. Um. I have learned because this track came out, Joey um, Joseph, as his friends call him, uh, is coming back to the music industry, even though he dropped like an EP like two years ago, I think. Um, very good, by the way. We talked about it. We spoke about it. We, sp- we spoke about it. We spoke remember. about it. Um, but it was very good. This track, was, you know, it was OK. It was good. Was it better than the EP? No, not in any way, shape or form. But because Joey Joseph is relevant again, <laughs> um, it has come out that he is anti-vax. So that ticks off a couple points, Joseph. Skillet tease. <laughs> if I get COVID, it's the Lord's bidding. <laughs> what are you on? The- Okay, it's crazy whatever, that band still has fans, but whatever. We're not talking about skillet now or ever. We but- could. We could interview them for a band that's on a major label. They do some tiny ass press. They'd be easy to get. No. Why not? He, he no. looks like Chris Taylor Brown. He, we should have Chris Taylor Brown and Skillet on the same and just let them talk. And we just watch. <laughs> we just we're the moderators. We let them debate or whatever. <laughs> we, we debate. They agree on everything. Well, maybe not. Then just talk. Let I them just know. have a, a conversation over, like, coffee or something. Yeah. And we post on YouTube and get a bunch of views off it. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, Avril Lavigne and Black Bear dropped a new single, Love It When You Hate Me. That's toxic. The song was pretty good. Sorry, I thought I thought Kiwi was, was talking. Uh, yeah, this song was good. You know, didn't see Avril Lavigne and Black Bear doing a thing. Yeah, but Black Bear, like, teeters on that 
pop punk thing anyway, and she's back to doing pop punk again, so it makes sense. Yeah. Are are Black Bear and MGK like friends? Because I, I get them when I picture Black Bear, I just picture like a bald MGK, even though I know that's not him. I I don't know if they're friends. I mean, I know that they've worked together musically mm-hmm. before, but um <clears throat> I, I don't know if they're friends. I don't keep up okay. with that. But like when I look at like modern day pop punk, at least in like the mainstream sense, like you see mm. like Machine Gun Kelly and mm. Travis Barker like making out in one corner, and then you've got <laughs> Avril Lavigne and Mod Son making out in the other corner. God. And then like Black Bear just kind of standing there like <clears throat> I'm pop punk sometimes. Sometimes, um, occasionally. Yeah, and then like that's modern day pop punk like <laughs> that's it just <laughs> just those five people like, and young blood's I, there like, like oh yeah and young blood yeah young, young blood's blood spitting there. on people and no uh, oh well no no young blood's spitting on his hand and then, and then <laughs> slicking his hair back <laughs> fucking what disgusting what? fucking was disgusting so much spit it was, i've never seen that much spit come out of a human being it was like a quarter cup of spit just like, where did it come from? Has he been <laughs> collecting that all night, just in like the, the the pocket of his cheek? I'm just so many questions that yeah, I don't I for, want. To I to. I tried to forget about Young Blood, but I I have now been remembered, <laughs> <laughs> reminded of Young Blood's existence. Um, K Tempest and Kevin Abstract dropped a single, "More Pressure." Um, Kevin featuring on a British rap song. It was not on my 2022 bingo card. Mm. Um, but well, we were 14 days in, and mm-hmm. I already checked that one off, so. There you go. Uh, actually, it wasn't out of the ordinary for a British rap song, considering he has worked with, uh, oh, God, what's his name? He was on Ginger. He's he's very British. Like, he's, you hear his voice, and you're like, God, you are you're British. Well, um, I have ex- extensive knowledge of Brockhampton and their discography and I have no fucking idea what you're talking about so if you could please enlighten me <laughs> Shut up! Um, God fine I'm no no okay what do you um, think of this song Glory I thought this song was very good but I put it on here because I would like to rant about yeah, Brockhampton it's, it's, not, it's no Brockhampton song not no. like we'll ever get one of those again oh my I'm so I was just chilling right I was chilling in the front room. I was just on my phone and I was just like, what a great day it is. The sun is shining. My brother's cooking in the other room. It smells great. Parents are laughing upstairs. You know, it's just a nice atmosphere. I'm happy. And then I just get a notification. Oh, Brockhampton tweeted. Oh, it's a picture. What is it? We're gone. We're done. Album isn't coming out. Tours canceled. Goodbye what you know people have been holding on to their tickets since like 2019 it's like mcr imagine if if my kim just said hey guys we know you've been waiting for this tour for three years but we're actually just gonna you know break up the band again because we don't want to do this at this point it feels like that's what they're gonna do anyway so yeah (laughs) it's just it's just you know i understand stuff happens behind the scenes but just like hate each other i think we lost glory guys hey welcome back happy 2022 happy 2022 man so as you were saying hate each other behind the scenes but then drop the album and then break up give us puppy and give us the new album that you guys were were just so excited about and then i know like there were so many Brockhampton apologists in the replies, and they're just like, they don't owe you anything. Yes, they do. When they're hyping, when they're hyping up this album, and they're like, this is the best stuff we've ever done. So excited for you guys to hear this, you know, blah 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 blah. And they're just like, hey, get, you're not gonna hear. It. Yeah, I mean, at least like, I, I get it all sucks and everything, but like, at least their last performance will be live stream since they live stream Coachella. So I guess that that's a that's a positive that their last show isn't going to be like some private show in L.A. for like five people to go to. See, but you're assuming that they're going to live stream their their stage. 
assume they'll be on one of the bigger stages. I mean, they're not like. I mean, they are a big name on there. Yeah. They're not like one of the little. Yeah, I wouldn't expect them ones. to be like playing the same stage as like Code Orange, you know? Like, uh. Oh, Code Orange. It's so cute. They're, yeah. they're, they're, Turnstile and Code Orange. It's so cute that they're on the poster there. So cute. There. Oh, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways. Uh, Knuckle Puck dropped a new single, Gasoline. This one. This is it. This is it. I really enjoyed this one. More than I thought I would. Yeah. Song is pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. EP comes out at the beginning of next month. Same day as Corn Day and Mitski Day. Um, so it's a great day for annoying people and people that don't shower and pop punk and, fans oh i was gonna say depressed people depressed people too yeah because that yeah. They, they did come up in that pop punk like that 2010 pop punk where everyone was just sad it's a great yeah. day for people that still use tumblr um <laughs> yeah that was a thing i'm being completely honest have you have you did you go through a tumblr phase i didn't i made tumblr to talk to someone that um like got their discord taken away by their parents so like we would communicate on tumblr and i never learned how to use tumblr though that's such a 2016 17 thing to do it was like maybe like 2018 2019 oh my god that was recent yeah i didn't start using discord until recently like a couple years ago no i thought you joined in like 2017 Maybe it was that long. I swear to God, if it's been that long, I will. Five years? I, I have to get off the internet, man. It's it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. Holy Come shit, on, it man. has been five years. I, yeah. I had the account since freshman year. Holy shit, it has been that long. I'm done. I'm wow. off the internet. That's it. Quitting. I'm yeah. quitting. I'm deleting my Discord account. That's it. Um, That's fair. Super Love dropped a new single, Maybe I Could Tell You. Fucking banger. That's banger? what I'm going to tell you. It's fucking banger. Ooh, got him Ooh. good. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, miss just once, please. One uh, time, just once. But yeah, this mm-hmm. song, this song rocks. Go listen this to is it. Very good. Yeah, I I'm now a super love stan. You weren't Straight already up. super love stan, bro. We had the best was, time with super love. You're right. I was a super love stan when I listened to their. It was like an EP, right? That's what we talked the about. The one with yeah. the yeah. When I listened to that one, that's when I was like, yes, this is the life for me. It's good. True. Mitski dropped a new single, Love Me More. Oh, Mitski. There's like, you know, people are, people like make memes about Mitski and Joyers and everything, as do I. Like, <laughs> Dude, um, we just did. Yeah, like, I literally <laughs> just did. But yeah. this song rocks. Like, it does. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not going to say like I'm excited for the album because really I'm not. It's Corn Day. So like, that's corn where all day. my excitement is. But like, I'm intrigued. Mm. Like, looking forward to listening to it because i've never i've never listened to a mitski album and don't yeah. really plan on it except for this job that we have to do um yeah but i'm intrigued i'll leave it at that intrigued. interesting i did enjoy this i'm not really like a mitski stan i like the i like nobody that song that's on song. my yeah it's a, it's a very good tiktok song uh but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to listen to the album, but it's not really just kind of like, a, oh my God, Mitski's dropping a new album. It's just like, oh, hey, Mitski's on the podcast playlist. Again. Yeah, again. <laughs> Giovanni Piazza and Daniel Sherman dropped a new single, Run It 3 slash Solo 2. Wow. Another, <laughs> another, another banger from Daniel. Mr. Daniel Sherman over there. Good um, job, Daniel. Very good. But can we talk about how he dropped this like rap rock banger and then like in a month he's got a folk EP coming out? Yeah, I'm still Daniel, I'm I think you should reconsider. That. I think you should reconsider the genre choice of the EP. Um this is all jokes, by the way. I'm just not big folk <laughs> enjoyers, but this is all jokes. <laughs> please don't, please don't forget mad, but um <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is this was this was good. Yeah, it's good. It's gonna be interesting. I, I'm uh, once again, I'm gonna use the word intrigued. Intrigued by the choice of <laughs> Did genre. Did you just learn that today? <laughs> <laughs> it's changed word of the week. Intrigued. Exactly. Do I intrigued. know what it means? Not really. No. But intrigued. <laughs> it just sounds good in these sentences, man. What oh can I God. say? You're doing great, man. You're doing great. Uh, falling. Uh, falling in reverse. Dropped a new single, Zombified. Banger! Banger! Me When I Lie. 
banger. Banger. This song sucked. It's a like, banger. Sucked. Banger. No, not another yes. limp banger. It's another limp banger. It's and not. And Fred Durst wasn't even on the fucking track. <laughs> it was in spirit. <laughs> It Listen, was so like, bad. I get, I good. get the, I get the hate for the song, or whatever. Um, I think it's good. Um, I'm sorry. Taking away the lyrical content, instrumentally, it slaps. Um, and Ronnie Radke knows how to market himself. Granted, I wouldn't agree personally with marketing myself as a piece of shit. Yeah. But it works for him. Part, partly because he is a piece of shit. That's besides yeah. the point. But like he like lays low, he stirs the pot, he gets mm. a shit ton of hype off it, he goes mm-hmm. on tour off that hype, sells mm-hmm. out rooms that are three to five thousand people every night. So who's really laughing at the end of the night? Ronnie fucking uh, Racky, when you're talking when you're talking about how badly his song sucks and then someone goes to check it out. It's all it's I got this man all- figured out. Yeah. It's all on purpose. And I, I honestly, I think it's hilarious. Mm. People feed right into it, man. I think the song is great. And I think the way he's marketing it is great too, which is by pissing people off. <laughs> yeah. And like, and then Sorry. like platforming the people that he, that he's like, are making fun of him. Granted, sometimes it's, he doesn't do it like in the nicest way, but that's because he's an asshole. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think it's all kind of great the way he goes about it like in a sick way like it's it's kind of great oh it's horrible <laughs> <laughs> like in a sick way it's kind of great like i don't know and i think the song's great but that's just me you have a point definitely has a way to market himself and to catch people's attention because it's oh hey ronnie did something again who's that let me listen to his music this is good separate the art from the artist though but then they go support the artist I don't care. Yeah, but, like, the thing is that, like, and that's very true, but, like, he's so good at, like, laying low. Like, he's, like, never in the media outside of when they he puts something out. Like, it's very rare that, like, you see a Rock Feed article on him or, like, a Rock Sound or, like, a Well, I think that's because people would get bashed for that. Like, if Rock Sound had, like, Ronnie Radke as, like, the cover person for a month, they would get crucified. Well, no one wants Ronnie Radke on the cover of Rock Sound anyway. Neither is yeah. Rock Sound. But like, I'm talking about no. like, like how Loudwire like wrote an article today about like how Skillet's frontman said some stupid shit. You never see Ronnie Radke like getting articles written about him about stupid shit he says because he lays low until it's time to drop an album. Then he says a bunch of stupid shit, gets a shit ton of well, articles written about him, shit ton of press, people hate him. And then his album or single gets millions of streams and he goes laughing to the bank. And then he just goes streams on Twitch to his edgy team fans. Fan base. Yeah. Fans. Didn't didn't he um, threaten to like sue like a 15 year old girl for like saying something about like how he sucks as a person? Yeah. And yeah. Right. What if he just does that to like news outlets and it's just like, hey, don't don't do this or I'll sue you. And that's why he doesn't have any articles written about him. I just think that he genuinely lays low. Like he's like he he really isn't on Twitter anymore, and that's where you can get yourself in most trouble anyway as yeah. an artist. So um, I don't know. I th- I think that for him it works. For literally anyone else in this day and age, it wouldn't work. But since he's been in the no. scene for twenty plus years, he's mm-hmm. already established he's himself in. as an asshole. Mm-hmm. And like people are just kind of like, well, he's an asshole, and like. Yeah, he's done a couple of things. Yeah, he went to jail. And like... He's done a a couple of things. A couple of things. He's went to jail and everything, you Mm -hmm. know. But like... Kind of just minds his own business. Except when like he has to put a song out. And like granted, I don't know... And he has to promote it. Like, of course, like I know he went to jail and like what happened there. But like outside of that, I don't really know what goes on with the man. Or like if if people have canceled him for X, Y, and Z. I don't really care what Ronnie Mm -hmm. Radke's doing. So I'm just saying Mm -hmm. this based off my own knowledge. But um... As far as I'm concerned, he just kind of plays low. He streams on Twitch. You know, he reacts to people talking about him and like. That's and what he does. Sometimes. Brendan, yeah. you're a tease. Oh um, my God. But yeah, I don't know. Mm. Marketing genius or just a fucking asshole? The world may not I think know. it's the latter. That could be that could be a punk rock NBA video. Finn <gasps> McKenty could write, a, write a 20 minute video. Is it, wait, it's, it's, wait, that's the good, that's the good one, right? Yeah. Finn, 
Yeah, okay. we like we like Finn. I like Finn. We like Pe- Finn. People think that some of Finn's takes are shit, and yeah, I agree. Sometimes he has bad takes, but um, <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. is Finn the one with the the black cap and the black hoodie? Maybe. Well, that's like that's, everybody. That's, that's, in a, the scene. that's 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 a <laughs> lot of people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Finn, Finn has. I could see. Finn, I could. Anyways, okay, puppy pile. But no, this is you. Puppy Pile dropped a new single, No Bad Days. More like No Misses, Absolute Banger. You could have said No Bad, like, songs. Bringing it back in <laughs> 2022, man. No, we're not bringing the whip back. For, for people who can't see, Shane just paused, stared into the camera, and did a fat whip. And, and it, <laughs> you want to bring that back. We're bringing it back, man. It's 2022. We're bringing it back. I think you could you you'll be you'll be doing that by yourself, man. Good luck. Though. I'm, gonna oh, start doing, I'm gonna start doing TikToks. I owe <laughs> TikTok two fat fat whip videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make fat whipping cool again in 2022. <laughs> All right, man. I I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you. I believe in you. You got this, man. Uh, but this song is good. <laughs> this song is very good. Aside, the song is good. <laughs> uh stand atlantic and royal the serpent wait royal okay whoa stand atlantic and royal and the serpent royal and the serpent is one project, one yeah. project uh dropped a single pity party and, this an- bang. and announced mm-hmm. the new stand atlantic album dropping on may 6th Ooh. it's very exciting i'm mm-hmm. i'm absolutely digging the direction that stand atlantic is taking their music mm-hmm. um like obviously we know how much I loved um, Pink Elephant back Pink in 2020. Pink Elephant was very good. But, wow. Um, that was two years ago. A long ass time ago, yeah. But I'm absolutely digging the direction that they're taking their music now. Mm-hmm. Like this heavy, heavier pop punk shit. Um, yeah. This track wasn't nearly as heavy as like Death Wish and Molotov. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, this song was still very good. Although the way they announced the album was weird because like they... They announced that the single was coming out, and then on Friday at 2, when the music video came out, the main tweet was that the music video came out, and then mm-hmm. under that was, oh, by the way, we have an album coming There's out. Like, album. wouldn't you, like, reverse those tweets and, like, mm-hmm. oh, we have an album coming out, and, oh, by the way, the music video for Pity Party's out. Is that we have an album, and also, hey, watch the new music video yeah. for the upcoming record, um, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, they've promoted the album since then, because that release, that, that whole announcement thing was not the best. Um, yeah, but they uh, have almost sold out one of the vinyl variants already. So clearly, the way one? they announced it, no, I don't have the money. Uh, what you but, said? You you've been saving money. Oh, by saving money, I mean like I just haven't been bu- buying concert tickets. Like I'm still broke as fuck, <laughs> and don't have forty one dollars to spend on a vinyl right now. But Come on, man. um, I'll grab one closer to the album or whatever if there's any left. Mm-hmm. But. Um, they've almost sold out and probably at this point have sold out one of the variants. Um, they pressed 666 of wow, um, oh, that's nice. of, one, of both the vinyl variants and the cooler of the two with like the alternate artwork is almost sold out now, which wow. is cool. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're almost at a million monthly listeners. I think with this record, they're going to do it. It's crazy. Yay. Like they were like 500 K when we interviewed mm-hmm. them and like out of nowhere, they're the fucking Eight hundred thousand. They're blowing up. Yeah. Yeah. The new sound is definitely gonna escort them into a. Uh, because with that um, yeah. that fucking that track that they did with nothing nowhere. Because nothing nowhere is no joke. He's <laughs> he's almost two million monthlies. Did twelve mm-hmm. million streams. Wow. So I mean that that's where that probably the, the three hundred extra you know three hundred thousand extra monthlies came from. Mm-hmm. Um, because like then you've got Molotov that's been out for since you know, the end of 2021 sitting at barely a million streams. So, Mm. um, yeah, but it's very exciting. They deserve it. They do. They really do. And, uh, they're on tour with set it off right now. So go, go to that tour. Set it off. And as it is. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've interviewed interviewed two of those bands. You can guess which ones. Um, (laughs) Memphis Mayfire put out a new single, the American dream dropped another music video in front of fucking TVs. Mm-hmm. Um and still have announced the album, so fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, Cave Sound dropped a new single, uh, two new singles, Squares and Y13. These were very good. 
and I, I love this Minecraft era thing. It's it's adorable, and I love it so much, and it will be put into my daily rotation. Glory moved past Memphis May Fire before I could say that the, uh, the song was good, but oh. announce the album, please. Anyways, Cave there Town. Go. These were mm-hmm. all right. We know how I feel about Cave Town. I thought it was least, okay, though. Exactly. There you go. We're, we're moving towards gonna, Cave Town appreciation. not going to spend five minutes shitting on it. Like, it's just, it was okay. Maybe I'm warming up to the the uwu soft boy shit. Yeah! I don't know. Like whatever. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Ravine FM dropped an absolute slapper of a single, "The Killing Womb." Pretty crazy. Absolute banger. Absolute yeah. banger. Loath dropped a new single, "Dismorpheus Display." Di- oh my god, "Dismorpheus Display." Sorry, and then I added an enough. S. It was uh, uh, pretty good go though. For it. Pretty good, pretty good song. Pretty pretty good banger song. Pretty pretty good banging song banger. Another limp banger. Loathe banger. Another loathe banger. <laughs> Featuring Fred. The the remix is remixed by Fred Durst. By Fred Durst. <laughs> you love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, Static dress in King Yosef put out a new single. Dis sinister. Dis 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 whatever. Didn't die. Center. That would probably be closer to what I said, um, <laughs> but spell, uh, speaking isn't my strong suit, <laughs> and, it's he pa- says, and it's my job. He says, a co-owner of a podcast, dude. <laughs> to have your job. <laughs> um, the, uh, the song was good, despite me not really knowing how to say <laughs> the <laughs> track name. <laughs> <laughs> the, the song was good. <laughs> the song was good. Yeah, this is good. This, yeah. is, this was very good. Uh, Never Shout Never dropped new single, Sunny Day. This was very, it was good, but it was odd in the middle of literally everything else because it yeah. was kind of soft, right? Yeah, like, because Never Shout Never came up in like, you know, like early la- 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s, you know, kind of kind of shit um, mm-hmm. and kind of like fizzled out in 2015. And then like they dropped an album out of nowhere in 2020 and it, They've dropped a bunch of singles at the end of 2021, early 2022, all with the same cover art or mm. very close, same color schemes, which I would assume means another record. Mm. Um, so it's just weird to see them kind of like it because it's like no one's really talking about it, but like Never Shout mm. Never was pretty, pretty decent size when um, yeah. when they yeah. were coming up uh, the, many years ago. So it's weird to see like no one's really talking that like Never Shout Never's like come back. Mm-hmm. put out an album there in the middle of putting out another one they might have even announced that i didn't really look into it outside of like i saw they dropped a new single yeah um, but the song was pretty good and uh it's cool to see them back so you guys have an open invitation if you'd like to come on the podcast as long not as you're not pod. mean to us like you were in that one brian stars interview i know you guys like <gasps> well, made up and everything but don't be mean to us <laughs> we're not oh. going to ask you what your if you prefer dogs and cats or whatever brian stars interviews whatever were brian like. <laughs> i mean brian stars asked a lot of interesting so, questions i i go through like like um phases of like watching brian star interviews because like mm-hmm. he would get like the biggest names in music at the time right yeah and he would sit there for an hour and just ask them the stupidest fucking questions in, like cargo pants and like an oversized <laughs> t-shirt well, he would wear the fucking blue brian stars t-shirt mm-hmm. and tight ass skinny jeans exactly and it was like and he yeah. would be asking like these big buff dudes like exactly so do you like your ramen with water or milk <laughs> and they just look at him like <laughs> and then he would go okay do you like birds or cats so i completely <laughs> understand why you flipped out of them by the way just don't be yeah. mean to us we're little kids yeah. brian stars come on the podcast <laughs> absolutely we'll, fucking we'll not ask you, i wait, will no? bully you for an hour <gasps> wait just... is brian stars not good no he just or like just, just not like no i just don't like his interview style <laughs> <laughs> and he also interviewed black veil brides like eight times and we can't even get them right. once so see and i was thinking of that when when you were like uh just interviews like the biggest names i was thinking of his uh andy black interview where they're he kind in- of like in a field he interviewed and it's the andy thing. black or he, he well it was andy black and um danny and ben from ask alexandria he interviewed those bands like seven or eight times each like in the span of like three years do you think the people who he's interviewing know that they're going to be interviewed or do they like show up and they just see him like in the distance and they're like god not again <laughs> 
I mean, it had to be okayed by people. He wasn't just going like, he wasn't just like climbing fences to like get back there and talk to these people next to their bus for an hour and a half. Like that doesn't happen. No, like, I mean like the, the press people just surprise them. Like they're like, we know he's going to say no, but this is a lot of views. So I don't like, I don't even know. Like who okayed this? Like, I, yeah. like, why would like management and press like look at this guy and go like, yes, we're going to have this guy ask our artist if he prefers fish or fish over or frogs chicken. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> what <laughs> but still you're welcome to come on the podcast yes, anyways, i do enjoy your interview style yeah mm -hmm. not brian I, stars never shot yes. never more than no <laughs> yeah both of them what? at the same time <laughs> i want to talk to brian stars i grew up with with brian thank you uh dead american drives a new single full of smoke they have an album coming out in february this song is pretty good mm-hmm mm -hmm. Banger. Banger is full good, of say. bangers. Probably we haven't heard it yet. <laughs> no, I was talking about the single. Oh, okay. It's called talking. Full of Smoke. Oh, full of bangers. Okay. They, yeah, exactly. Nice. I, I get the joke. Yeah. <laughs> high wind, not high wind. That's dropped a new single, Wind Waker. Yeah. Um, this is a band consisting of a bunch of members from uh, a little known band called Bless the Fall. Um mm. It, pretty good they've got an ep coming out actually next week um oh wow or no that this friday fun. oh wow yeah get my days confused uh but the song is pretty good and i'm sure the ep will be pretty good open invitation if you guys would like to come on the podcast come on the pod come on the pod let's talk about the ep mm -hmm. uh muse dropped a new single won't stand down pretty good pretty pretty banging actually true my humble opinion uh royal coda dropped a new single even if twinkly as fuck this was my favorite song on the podcast playlist as soon as it started i was like oh my god this is a perfect song and i am in love with it it was pretty good yeah it's very good. very good i i loved how twinkly it was it was just unapologetically just twinkle so and i was twinkle. like yeah yeah come on the podcast true Circa Survive put out a new single, a Electric Mu Moose. Muse? <sighs> we just, you we just with talked that? about Muse 10 seconds ago. <laughs> Anyways, okay. mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. song was all right. Uh, whatever's going on with Circa Survive, mm -hmm. respect it, guys. But, like, mm -hmm. I just I don't know. Like, what's, what's like, they're like, they're switching genres and, like, they were like a post hardcore band. Like now they're just like doing like this ambient shit. And like I really don't know how to feel about it. Like I really yeah. like I desperately need to have them in front of us for 30 minutes just so we can pick their brains about it. Mm -hmm. Cuz it's been 4 years without a record from them. Um or we're coming up on year 4 at this point. Wow. Um and like the, obviously they did the EP and the single and everything. Um mm -hmm. and the single had the same cover art as the EP. Mm -hmm. Something's up here. Something's happening. Something's in the works there. Um, but yeah, I just I'm confused. Mm. Confused is a good word for it. Confused. Because uh, I I like the lead single off the um the EP that they put out at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then the the EP was confusing, like mm -hmm. really confusing. Like as I was rubbing my head, head scratchingly confusing. Um, just and this, thinking about this, it. it just baffles me and the single <laughs> continues to do that like uh, the, I think they're just having fun they are just having fun and it's like exactly. I, like I don't know if like Anthony was like writing songs for like fucking whatever and like accidentally sent them to Circus Survive and like they were like yeah this is dope and like let's do that made, one and like just recorded a bunch of songs like I don't mm -hmm. fucking know like if these were meant yeah. for that project because like it doesn't line up with anything I've heard from Circus or I before this. Yeah. Um, and honestly, kind of lines up with what the million side projects Anthony has going on. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the podcast. Let's fucking let's, let's talk about. Let's it. dissect everything that's going on in your camp right now. Exactly. I'm just confused. It's just a big question mark. Yeah. As mm -hmm. long as the fans are digging it, though, because like I'm, I'm confused. I'm like indifferent to it at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, just like living in a state of confusion mm -hmm. right now. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, against the current, dropped a new single, Wildfire. A pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. Um, against the current, doesn't miss. 
in my very honest opinion mm -hmm. uh, a very another banging track mm -hmm. um so that's that's always cool it's always good it's always good when a band drops a good song yeah that's always a plus <laughs> when, they, when they drop something that's that's nice yeah, and, I thought it was good. <laughs> and for our last song of the evening, Born Anew, dropped a new single, Rat in the Rat Room. room. Uh, I would argue that this band is better than um, some, like, mainstream, like, I guess, like, what are they, like, metalcore, like, borderline deathcore kind of shit that they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're better than some, like, um, mainstream bands that are doing it right now. I thought mm -hmm. the song was fucking good. Same with the EP they put out at the beginning of last year. Um, they're they're so fucking good. Oh. It was heavy. Yes, it was heavy, but it's good. <laughs> um, so mm. that that's everything we got tonight. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. It's good underscore noise underscore cast. You can follow us on Instagram. It's good noise podcast. Facebook. It's good noise pod. YouTube is good noise podcast. Every audio streaming service ever is good noise podcast. Bandcamp is good noise records and our Patreon is patreon.com slash good noise podcast. Glory has your important plugs and your Patreon supporters. I fucked that up. Happy 2022. And um, <laughs> well, we're going to sign off because we have an interview in five minutes. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, I have to find the list. I forgot to copy and paste it. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. My brother, my uncle, Matt from Pulses. Jeremy Brady, Starian, Eric. Let's go. Oh. oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, important plugs. Black Lives Matter. As always. Thank you. Uh, stop Asian hate. Don't be a prick. That's all I got to say. Uh, wear your mask. Get vaccinated. Uh, if you've been vaccinated, get a booster. You know, every every little bit helps. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's all. That's all I got to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's all we got tonight. Um, I'm going to go take a power nap. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. We're back. Yeah. We're back. All right. Uh, well, I've been Shane. I have been Glory. And we have been the Good Noise Podcast. See you next week. Bye. Bye.